Hey guys, Kate420, back again. Touchy subject, but kind of part two of my, um, what I believe could have happened, could have happened in the Jenkins case. Um, it kind of goes along with some of the evidence that I showed you in my uh, quick rundown of uh, why I stopped researching into that case. It's not that I, I I've never stopped. Come on, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've never stopped. I've I always watched the new stuff, especially the stuff that looks to me legitimate. But I just feel like the answers were given to me the day that I opened the Cook County file and found that metadata did not match anything that was released to the public. Um, and therefore, from that point on, I anything thrown my way didn't seem right. However, this today's video is going to start out very similar to you know uh, that situation, and I'm going to show you how dangerous the world of social media has become for our daughters, our, for our sons, for our children. Period. What uh, for our grandchildren, for our for our family members who maybe are struggling to make a buck. Um. I suggest that if you've got any young, young ones, put them away because it's a little touchy subject today. But if you've got adolescent girls who you know are on uh, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, all that, this this is the time to have that talk with them because there's no time like the present when I start explaining to you how very serious this and how very quick and serious this problem is progressing. But before I get there, we all know that YouTube is, you know, the center for all suppression and it's where my videos go to die. Um, somehow or another, I'm starting to get a little bit of pickup, but um, I'll never be monetized, even though I meet all the qualifications. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe my sub started harassing them. But now YouTube has these new terms of service you have to, to meet and qualify with, and it's just on the goalpost. So, uh, here's my channel, uh, my PayPal and my cash app. Yeah. I, I heard some, some stuff in the comments about, Oh, she's my, now she's got a cat. Can I tell you something? I've been doing this now for years. Uh -oh. There we go. I've been doing this for three years now. Um, and I spend a lot of time doing stuff that I don't like, like freaking recording and editing and talking to a camera when in all reality I just like to be filling my head full of the knowledge and talking about it to the next human being but this is the way I can get it out to more people so yes I have a cash app and a paypal and if you'd like to support me great if not the best way you can support me is to press like and share that's all I'm asking thank you last but not least YouTube's dying it's dying and I had to do something to back myself up because I don't want to uh, be part of YouTube turning into the Google's form of Netflix, which is exactly what their their whole purpose is. Because 10 years ago, 80% of YouTube, the, the highest, most um, played videos on YouTube were from original content makers. Now it's only, it's down to 20%, 10, 10 years, down to 20%. And the top 80% are the Will Smiths, the Kelly, or excuse me, the Katy Perry's, the you know, the, um, the YouTube originals as like the Netflix originals. You guys see like a combination thing going on there. So I started a bit shoot channel and this is what sucks. I'm starting from scratch. I got to open my uh, YouTube channel at, during the time of my research with Kanika. And I really got very lucky and blessed. Oh, thank you, everyone that subscribed to me during that period. I've managed to hold on to you, most of you. And I'm lucky enough to have that background. Um, still same thing, K420 on, it'll be BitChute, uh, it was your BitChute.com back, backslash K420. Uh, all the same videos. I'm thinking about starting to do some BitChute exclusives. Um, that way uh, I can start building up this channel a little bit. And I know that if you guys know that I have a BitChute, you'll share it too. So thank you. Let's get going. Now, this is the story that I saw first back actually while I was researching some updates on the Kanika thing for that video. I came across this article. Um, it's called Alive. I know that's a strange name, but my news guard up in the top right corner, if you follow my arrow here, this is a third party um, news guard. It checks basically, lets you know. Here we go. I'll show you. 
and let you know about the site. He lets you know, do they, um, do they have a good history of, here we go, does not repeat published false content, does not gather, or gathers and represents information responsibility. See, like, so it shows all their credibilities, it shows all their transparencies, and it says, this website adheres to all nine of New Guard. News Guard, we're going awful slow. Here we go. All right. Several missing teens in Atlanta, Atlanta hotels, according to sources. So, you've got teens whose mothers are probably, you know, or grandmothers or what, hang on, or whatnot, are probably quite nervous. Let's hang on. Maybe that, let, me, let me see if this video will actually play. It never happens, but you, we can all cross our fingers. Hey, Crash, thank you. Sex trafficking, a huge concern this Super Bowl week as thousands are expected to invade our city. Naima Abdullahi joined us live from the newsroom with a look at how volunteers are raising awareness to help potential victims. Sheba, that's right. This serious growing problem in Atlanta has so many volunteers working around the clock. They're taking the initiative to find potential sex trafficking victims in our area. Now, the volunteers handed out flyers at hotels, motels, restaurants, and so many other places. They say victims are lured in different ways like false advertisement, love, and kidnapping. The group Save Our Adolescents from Prostitution, or so, handed out so pictures of missing women. The group tell us two of the girls were recently spotted at hotels. We're still waiting to also confirm that with police. Now, one sex trafficking survivor says every effort can save a life, and she's been sharing her story to raise awareness. But I'm standing before you today as living proof that freedom is possible and a life of joy and purpose is also more than possible. And for more information on the list of missing girls, including their picture, name, and age, visit 11alive.com. Yes, 11alive. There we go. All right. So there's that. And basically, I don't need to read the article then. This was right around Super Bowl 53. So, yeah, this was last, last year, right? Right about a year ago. You guys have to know that major sporting events are probably one of the biggest uh, biggest things when it comes to sex trafficking now. Uh, when we're talking about, I actually did a case on a missing girl who's Alexis. I can't think of her last name right now. I'm sorry. Um, who has a young, young child who's, you know, whose mother knew what she was doing, that she was making a little money. Backpage had shut down. A lot of people were going to following these sporting events and she went to the Floyd Mayweather event. And that was the last time she was seen. Um, she actually did talk to her mother a few different times after that, in, in that week. But um, yeah, and she, stop it. I'm doing a video. Hey dogs. <laughs> Either one's snoring and the other one's licking themselves while I'm trying to do a video. And you wonder why I throw you out of my room all the time while I'm trying to record. Don't give me that look or I'll show them. I'll show them your little baby look. Anyway, sorry. Let's move on to this next one where I really want to start focusing on where they're making their money today. Okay. Okay. Prostitution in um okay, we all know Backpage got shut down. But prostitution isn't what we all remember it as, where you know, these women on the corner who are being shamed by the public, who are who are outcasts, they're um, you know, crowded up in the bad end of town and they're on like I said, they're on the corner and cars know what that you know, guys in cars know what that is and they know that if they have the money they can pull up and a girl will jump in. So Sorry. Let's start with Patreon. You'll notice I don't have a Patreon. I don't have a Patreon. Actually, I, I actually did have a Patreon when it first came out. I started to set it up. And I started to set it up right as this was blowing up. And by this, I, it's the women who sell their nudes on Patreon. My, there's, I mean, we have people from... Why is this camera messing with me tonight? Sorry, guys. Hold on. Anyway, uh, I think it's, we have a storm. I'm in upstate New York, so God only knows what's happening. We have a really nasty storm the last couple of days. Um, 
I think it was Belle Delphine. Um, there's a couple other ones who, have, you know, what they do is they start, they have bronze and gold and platinum levels on their Patreons, right? And so you pay $30 a month and you have access to what you know to whatever level and then there's a i've seen them so far as the diamond level which is like i think $10,000 and basically that's an anything goes live type interaction one on one interaction you know um and it sells these women are making bank and they don't they feel that they are no longer having to risk their physical bodies in the same room as these men. They're making the money without ever having to risk themselves. Now, these are also apps being promoted to our teenage daughters. So for $5 a month, Stephanie Michelle will let you follow her private Snapchat account. She promises you'll see her hanging out with friends in LA, making goofy faces or just loafing around watching anime. And if she's home, I'm usually just wearing either underwear or some tight little tank top or nothing at all. This is the first reward tier for her Patreon account, where she's creating naughty cosplay content. Michelle offers her 435 paying subscribers access to a variety of not safe for work rewards, a, a signed sexy print, a naughty three to five minute personalized video, and access to her constantly updating Patreon feed, which includes erotic photo shoots and videos. When she first launched the account about a year ago, she didn't know, what, or excuse me, a year ago, she was hesitant. I didn't think anyone would be interested, but in my first week, I made over $1,000. Now in a good month, I make about 5000 I don't know. Operating her Patreon is a full-time job, she said. But she's just one of dozens of dozens of women that are using Patreon to sell new nude photos, videos, and other prizes to to willing and paying fans. I think Belle Delphine sold her bath water for like thirty dollars a jar. Yeah, I'm not kidding. She sold a bathtub. She sat in the bathtub and started scooping up water, and, she, and literally people were buying it. For the, she sold the entire tub full of water. Um. As a full time Patreon creator, she's on the more successful and erotic. A successful end of erotic content makers. Some of her contemporaries see Patreon as a side hustle on the way to more lucrative gigs. We'll get to those no more lucrative gigs. It says selling news on the internet isn't new, but Patreon has made the transaction both more appealing for creators and their customers by simplifying the payment process. Hosting content other companies will not touch. Um, which kills me because I won't go into it, but I, I used to watch a guy uh, here on YouTube, a political guy. I'm not going to name his name because once I do, if it'll blow up. If anybody who's into politics will know who I'm talking about anyway. But um, he had uh, an issue with Patreon. He was actually one of the first ones banned. And it definitely was what I would have assumed like a, a Logan Paul oopsie or a... Or a, 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 a What's the other one from New Zealand? You know what I'm talking about. The shooter said his name. Oh, I can't believe I can't think of his name right now. What a terrible YouTuber I am. Anyway, um, there's another YouTuber. He's got like all the meme show. Anyway, he also um, had an incident where, you know, he had his slip up and spent a long time uh begging for his uh, accounts to not be uh, so limited, excuse me. So yeah, Patreon was kicking people off for words, but are allowing your child. I, I just want to know how does Patreon make the, you know, know the difference between a 17 year old girl selling her nudes on Patreon and an 18 year old girl selling her nudes on Patreon? Because as a, um, an adult myself, what if I was to be on there purchasing Jimmy's um, nudes. How do I know that Jimmy is an adult so that I know I am paying a consenting adult to send me nude photos? Do you understand what I'm saying? How, what is what is providing the customer with some type of knowledge that they're not paying a minor to send nude pictures? I don't know. I have to look into it some more. I didn't get my answer that I wanted. Um, I didn't get any. I, I got a very general 
terms of service answer, but I'm got some, I have a couple of people on it. We're working on it, and I hope to have an answer for you in my part two of this video. So let's move on to these X-rated Snapchat things. Now, if you remember during the Jenkins case, Nifa, who was also found to be uh, in some of the back page posters that I, I located online. Her picture was in the back page party posters where they were meeting at hotels. You know, the groups of girls would meet at hotels from on back from back page. And then they before they would be there, though, like the, the area would get the poster and know what girls were going to be there. So you could pretty much know like, OK, I. I know what I'm going to get if I'm at that hotel on that day. So she was part of that. So is Brianna Ashley Cotton. And so I do believe, it, I don't want to overspeak, allegedly was um, Aubriana Mays in some of the ones. Anyway, Snapchat has spawned an illicit underground industry. Adult entertainers are setting themselves up with an unofficial premium account so fans can pay them for their explicit content. But this cottage industry is under attack. It's because I believe Snapchat is definitely um, targeted towards the adolescents. Okay, premium Snapchat might sound like an elite tier for photo sharing photo sharing apps most vociferous users but really it's something that the firm isn't so keen to shout out about the unofficial tier of snapchat users is populated mostly by people in the adult entertainment industry the snapchat entrepreneurs offers access to their photos videos to small networks of fans willing to pay for it for snapchat premium is the titillating cottage industry that just won't go away ari saunders a porn star cam girl estimates up to 90 percent of those in the adult industry currently run even an unofficial premium snapchat service or have done so in the past and your child is on snapchat all day i'm sure Let's talk about the other ones that your children are on. What about Instagram? I'm sure you have a child who has used Instagram more than once, right? Come on. If you have a child thir you know, between 10 and 13, they start wanting to put their pictures up and you have to start explaining to them about, you know, uh, watching what they post and whatnot. So this is a Fox News article. I'm sure somebody's going to point that out to me. So I'll point it out to you first. I don't care. I believe that Fox has been more honest in the last three years than CNN, MS, MSNBC, and the rest of them for the last two decades. So if you don't like it, I'm sorry. But I have other content from other pages. I just happened to grab this article because I thought it was very filled. It was more filled with facts than some of the other ones. So. While there are plenty of legitimate models with millions of followers on Instagram, there are also a bevy of instant models whose glamorous lives, sources tell Fox 411, are provided not actually by modeling work, but by Johns from whom they solicit sex by using the popular social media app. Now sites like The Dirty, tag your sponsor, oops, and tag the sponsor are being used to out women allegedly using Instagram to search to secure sex clients. Nick Ritchie, founder of the dirty.com told Fox 411. He began to see call girls using the social media app around three years ago. I started getting swarms of submission to the dirty.com from guys debunking females modeling careers because these women would constantly be flashing cash, private jet flights and exotic trips, but had no jobs. Their IG photos flaunted the, ultimate lifestyle only afforded by rich men. The blogger whose site broke the Sydney Leathers and Anthony Weiner sexting scandal story said he can he can tell a legitimate sex, excuse me, a legitimate working model from an IG call girl based on their app activity. For some reason, these women need to brag about their facade. Posting pictures on their IG of a $25,000 purses, red bottom shoes. Sorry, my footage is. And of course, cash. And of course, the selfies from a yacht in the south of France or Dubai. <laughs> you know, I'm kidding. I got more about Dubai in this video. Don't you stick around. Don't go nowhere. If you're a mother, there's some things you need to know. 100% of their IG postings 
are fake setup situations to lure more men into liking their pictures. A modeling industry insider explained these women use social media as a way to attract future clients with seductive photos, noting no, there's no way selfies can translate into enough money to maintain the luxurious lifestyle they document. The sexy photos and videos are always giveaways to lure people in. The vast majority of these women aren't making money from modeling. Going to a beach in a bikini isn't paying isn't a paying job. You get no income from having 30,000 followers on IG. That dollar per dollar, $1 follower rate is pretty much the standard for any kind of endorsement deal should a model secure one. Which means sending a pic of oneself to a modeling, modeling a product with 30,000 followers would typically net a model with an endorsement deal about $300. Uh, the site tag, the sponsor, refers to such women as sponsorettes, whose lifestyle is provided by a sponsor, their term for a John. A John who we asked not to use his name, who asked us not to use his name, told Fox 411 he solicits escorts on Instagram by looking for models who pose alone on yachts, private jets, exotic vacations, and wear luxury items, as well as those who post personal email addresses using domains like Yahoo or Gmail rather than listing a legitimate modeling agency like Elite or Ford. <clears throat> I email her first saying she's beautiful. Then I ask her, how much is your time worth? How much would lunch cost me? 500? We go back and forth until we meet, reach an agreement. If she meets me in person, then I know she's willing to do anything for money. We need to explain this to our daughters. As soon as we can. The minute that they can understand it. This needs to be known. The John said that IG prostitutes can re can make a range of money for sexual favors starting at around five hundred per hour, and that seasoned escorts can bank over ten thousand for an overnight stay. Of course, Instagram does not approve of such behavior. You may not use the services for illegal or unauthorized purposes. You you agree to comply with all the laws. We reached out to see if anyone has been removed from the service for using it to promote prostitution and did not hear back. As for the woman who might be outed on the sites like the Dirty and Tag Your Sponsor, Richie said the publicity will probably help their business, honestly. Okay, that's what it says. These women panic at first, threatening legal action, the dirty.com. But what is better than money is fame. They instantly become insta famous in a sea of men, reach out to them, ready to open their wallets for sex. I hate to say this, but there is a very, uh, good percentage of our children of this generation's girls that find in, uh, Instagram in, what do you call it? influencer social media influencer Instagram influencer is an honest to god job that they career that they want to have and if that's the case we need to know this they need to know this and we need to know how to navigate around this so that they if that's what they're looking to do is be an honest to God influencer that we have them in with the right people, the people who are, who, whose intentions are that, as he said, you can tell the difference between their, their activity on, on the app. Let's go to TikTok guys. Oh yeah. You didn't, you thought TikTok was going to escape this too. No, all of them, every one of them. <sighs> yep. -er. TikTok teen born. So as I hear that, got a cigarette. Sorry, there goes my video. Not that it was ever going to be monetized in the first place. Did you see an ad? Did you see an ad? Nope. All right. TikTok teen porn exposed as a Snapchat as Snapchat sex scammers target billion user app. So let me see what this is before it even comes up. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. This damn weather is so cold. TikTok, the social media short form video creation and sharing app with more than a billion. 
billion, I want to make sure I got it right, monthly active users is usually found at the top of the Apple App Store downloads page. The incredible popularity of the app of an app which was only launched in 2017 has not escaped the attention of scammers, though. A new report by Santnam Narang, a senior research engineer at Tenable, reveals just how low the porn peddling crooks will go to gain likes and drives and drive unsuspecting teen TikTok users to their websites. So it looks like there's they must be using some, another site to spam the the TikTok users with their porn stuff. Okay. Like TikTok itself, the sex scammers also appear to be in their infancy, but are growing in number and complexity. And in the two-part report, Narang reveals that the grifters are using video sharing platforms to gain likes and followers to gain cost per action networks of adult dating sites. They are quick to take advantage of the so-called cost per install networks that monetize the herding of users towards other installing other apps. Right. So the more the more I can get you to install this app, the more people I can get to install this app. That's how I make my money. Snapchat sex connection. That's not where the hurting stops, though. Narang's research found that TikTok scammers are pushing users towards specific Snapchat accounts. Remember what we just talked about? Those elite premium Snapchat accounts? Yeah. Well, Snapchat accounts trick them into sing to singing up to adult website adult sites are subscribed to premium snapchat accounts didn't we just talk about that because snapchat has historic historically operated within a walled garden narang said it is a unique way to stealthily create these adult dating accounts that are only accessible to those who know usernames or snap codes The TikTok teens that do move over to Snapchat are presented with a Snapchat story featuring videos of women either being sexually suggestive, displaying nudity, or performing sexual acts, Narang warns. The stories themselves contain a link attachment that directs users to an external page hosted on Google sites. That site will be an age verification, will be age verification gated, but regardless of the response, the user is redirected to an adult dating affiliate program. So your 10 year old who got that, that link sent to them through their TikTok on their TikTok app on their little music sharing video, they get a little link and they click it and it takes them and they get to basically see the story of one this Snapchat and they get the code and their name. And then from that point on, they have access to this person's sexually explicit content. Tenable informed TikTok and Snapchat of the findings and TikTok responded that it was in the process of removing the accounts we identified and actively re working to remove and identify others. Well, Snapchat directed the company to a support article. I reached out to both Snapchat and TikTok for a statement. Snap or TikTok spoke spokesperson said TikTok has strict policies to safeguard users against fake, fraudulent, misleading content. Blah 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 blah. I had not heard from Snapchat at the time of this publication, but it will update the article as soon as I do. Well, what does that tell you? Two who don't give a fuck about what happens to our kids. Snapchat and then Instagram. Neither one of them responded to the to the uh, author of the article. All right, a cams today is a, a site to help uh, bring light to human trafficking. I we already kind of talked about this. I just wanted you to see that. I mean, actually, this is the anti money laundering one. Either way, they're they're all part of one big thing. I just wanted you to get an idea because I said something earlier about human trafficking and the major sporting events thing. I want you to know how much money that brings in with an estimated four. Where is my camera now? Come on. I don't know what's going on. 407 million in new spending, 125,000 visitors and 5,000 jobs created, 242 million created in wages since 2017 alone. The Super Bowl is more than just a game. It is the largest non-global annual sporting event, bringing in hundreds of thousands of rowdy fans. But it says, um, oh, I'm getting so mad. I should have just left the camera off. You can still hear me. 
<sighs> HT is a multi-billion dollar industry and has a serious global issue that cannot be ignored. The Super Bowl has historically seen a huge increase in HT, particularly in the sex trade targeting. Human trafficking, guys. That's what HT is speaking about, by the way. I should have probably told you that. I skipped over a part. These, let me just go back. These out-of-town partiers stimulate local economies and are often harmless. However, they also attract nefarious types of citizens into these host cities who lead and promote human trafficking rings. It's a multi-billion dollar industry and cannot be ignored. It's been, um, the Super Bowl is the greatest show on earth, but it also has an ugly underbelly, says Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott. It's commonly known as the single largest human trafficking incident in the United States. Okay? When I say that something like the Super Bowl can attract your 18-year-old child, your 17, to go make $10,000 and they think it's just going to be, a, we're, we're, we're doing this on our own accord. We're doing it. We know what we're getting into. It's a contractual type thing, but it's not. Because when they get there and they make their money and they finally manage to pay off whatever the, the pimps feel that they owe, they have to count on a strange stranger who, who has just determined what their wealth, what their worth is by how much they made in a weekend. You have to count on that person to let you walk back out those doors. And unless you did a real shitty job at bringing in the money, think about it. You were probably trying to impress them to get more money. So now they don't want to let you go for sure. We have to have these conversations with our girls because if we're not honest with them and we're not open with them at all about everything, about how life really is, that there are the type of people out there that will take advantage of every single kindness you have, every weakness that you show. We have to show our girls that there is value and taking the harder routes when it comes to income and, uh, you know, taking the route that doesn't include unbuttoning their pants, you know, because the, it, although that route seems to be the hard, the, you know, the, the more difficult, the one that has, you end up with the most, uh, most chance of failing, whatnot. I don't know at the end of the day, I can still sit here and look in this camera and say, I've never sold my body. And I guess to me, that's a big thing. And I feel like we're, lo we're losing an entire generation or two, two, two generations of girls who, who can no longer say that because to them, it was a thing that, you know, they, they, I keep hearing the risk, the risk is gone now. The risk is gone now. No, no. Because you, there's psychos on the other end of these computers as well. And they're, they can, just because you're a little good at hiding your, your location, doesn't mean you can't get someone so obsessed with you that they're willing to drive 16 hours across the country and stalk you down. Just, we really need to have honest, truthful conversations with our adolescent girls before it gets to this point. Before they see these things on social media. So they're, so that we're not worried because I'm a free, uh, I'm free speech. I'm very libertarian in that aspect. I'm free. I'm, I'm very much, uh, let consenting adults be consenting adults. However, if you don't instill certain knowledge in your children from your very young age, they can, they can become weak to situations that seem good to them. God, Oh, because it has a stop jet. Okay. Anyway, interview with a Dubai pimp. Here we go, guys. Here's the last little bit I wanted to share with you. If if you don't know, if you don't know me, but come on, what's going on? Hmm. Give it a second, guys. I can't. There we go. Oh, that was a good look, wasn't it? All right. Here we go. Go back up. I hate Vice News. I really do because their page just runs and runs and runs. 
There we go. Interview with a Dubai pimp selling sex to billionaires. Want to shoot an AK from a Lamborghini? Craving an orgy in the desert? Well, this is your man. When I tell you that our, our young girls are being trafficked to Dubai by the thousands and are being degraded in ways you would never even fucking believe, it would make you want to sneak over there and start being a vigilante in defense of them if you really got to know a lot of these stories. But I'm not going to get into them to that depth. So let's I'm going to give you a little brief uh, paragraph out of this page, and then I'm going to show you something that will probably change your entire uh, outlook on life when I show you. It's, why, it's what these men in Dubai are paying our, uh, our young girls for the, you know, that's, it's what they want them to fly out there and show off. You know, they pick these Instagram models and, and they come out and take all these pictures while they're out there with the men, but they don't mention that while they were out there with them. Yeah. I'll tell you in a minute. Dubai is the Las Vegas of the middle East. If Las Vegas were a burqa. Okay. Uh, it's the party city of the United Arab Emirates, where the pious can taste the underside of the most carnal desires among fake night or excuse me, among nightclubs, fake islands, and the tallest, weirdest skyscrapers. Yes, as well as the Jumeirah Hotel, where who? Where the Marcel Miller, the guy who started the Kanika Jenkins Facebook investigation page the day after she was found. Yeah, that's where he works, remember? Yeah, right in Dubai. Jumeirah Hotel, he's a cook in the kitchen. Kind of strange, right? Body found in the freezer of the Crown Plaza. Guy starts a Facebook investigation page that has hunt, that, that literally is where the family spends the time putting up any information. There was over 110,000 people when he created that page. His real name is Marcel Karupka. He is a cook at the Jumeirah Hotel in, in here in uh, Vegas, or Vegas, the Vegas of the Middle East. So, um, it says, um, uh, is, 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 I want to go back right here. D says, so you're Ukrainian. How did you get in the sex industry in Dubai? I was working as a consultant for an engineering company. As I worked up the corporate ladder, my job became more about spending time with my clients as they traveled to Saudi Arabia and taking them away on weekends to Dubai. I established some great contacts and eventually just moved to Dubai where I was subcontracted by various companies and banks to show their clients a good time. Catch that one? Well, we have more of an epidemic of young African-American girls being trafficked uh, to Dubai for a very specific purpose. And it's very sad. It's sad because most of them know that they're going for that. Most of them know that what's going to happen to them when they get there. They are called the Dubai porta potties Oops, too far. It says, rich men in Dubai are shitting on Instagram models. Come on. Really? Last page? You gonna mess with me? Sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on with it. I am going to do something really quick, though. Give me one second because it's really irritating the shit out of me. There we go. Here now? No. Hold on. Oh, they both got to be plugged into it. Somebody give me a heads up. I think I got a USB port on my laptop that's sh shite in the bed. And uh, I need some help. Figure it out. Do I does it need to be like reconfigured? Um hang on a second. There we go. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Did it work? Oh. Well, that works too. There we go. I'll just use the oh, that's terrible though. Sorry guys, it's the best I can do for now. Um Crash, bang, boom. Okie dokie. Last but not least, let's go. Have you ever 
looked into an at an Instagram model and wonder how she affords to travel the world constantly without having a job or actual modeling work? Have you looked at these 10 out of 10 girls and wondered how they are able to spend their time in private jets, sunning themselves on super yachts without ever taking paid promotions and creating content that requires any skill at all? Have you ever wondered why these in these girls' bios, there's often a small e email address for booking inquiries. Sorry. Um, despite the fact that these people are not actual influencers or models, these girls do not work with tourism boards or promote fancy hotels. They stay in fancy hotels. Sure, but they are not being paid to promote them by any means. Okay? Ever wondered what the F is going on with that? Well, dear readers, I'm here to tell you that if you see a drop-dead gorgeous girl with 100,000 followers on an Instagram drinking cocktails in Dubai, there is a very high probability that she is being shit on by a rich Arab. Tasha K, thank you for that first piece of information. Back in the day, Tasha K broke that news and I, I just, I, I had to go right to the internet and start, they were shitting on them. Why are they shitting on them? <laughs> I'll never forget that. Uh, Instagram models exposed. Allow me to explain. Sex work is not new since the down, dawn of the time women and men have been using their bodies to make bank. It is no great surprise to me that, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Hot young women are capitalizing on what God gave them in order to travel the world and make five figures a night. In my opinion, if a woman chooses to work in the sex industry, then more power to her. The sex industry is perhaps the only industry where women make more money than men. A lot more. Uh, there are no entry requirements in where a woman can set her own hours, rates, and choose what services she does and does not provide. Seriously, if you want to be a sex worker, you do you, girl. I actually wrote more about this topic in my article about cam girls, just in case you're interested. Sounds like she's pretty open-minded. It's also no great surprise to me that sex work has shifted in the digital age. D digitalizing sex work allows women to be safer. We had this conversation, no sense going over it again. Something else that is no great surprise to me is that sexually repressed cultures have some seriously messed up citizens. Seriously. If you want to create a whole society of perverts, perverts, then take human sexuality taboo and you will be amazed how creative people can get. This may, they, this may not be politi politically correct, but it's true. Don't come for me. With these three things in mind, you would think that what I'm about to tell you came as no great surprise, surprise to me. However, just... <laughs> Me too. Just when I thought it could not get any worse, it outdid itself. Yes, 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 it did. Oops. Uh, not being content with learning foreign workers. Oh, sorry. However, just when I, yeah, just when I thought Dubai could not get any worse, it, it outdid itself. Not being content with luring foreign workers to the UAE under false pretenses of swanky apartments and great salaries and then forcing them to work as slaves. They're known for that as well. Dubai has decided that actually forced labor is so last year, which is why when I was doing the Kanika Jenkins case, we spent weeks talking to who? The employees. The employees who were non-citizens, who didn't have their green card yet, who had, were living on the ninth floor of the Crown Plaza with their children, um, women who had seen other women that worked there go missing. And when we're, they questioned where they were at, they too went missing. So we were talking to staff at these hotels or at Crown Plaza Hotel because forced labor is a huge, huge under the behind the scenes thing. And right as that whole Jenkins case was breaking, they had a giant meeting in the kitchen with all the staff and had basically told them, do not answer any questions. Do not speak to any YouTubers. You know, you don't, don't speak to any media period. They were told. And little by little, they started to break the group up and, and swap them out at other hotels owned by the same people. So I'm sure you're really wondering what exactly is a Dubai porta potty? Well, ladies and gents, Dubai has decided that it's way more fun than gross human rights abuses and modern slavery is paying Instagram models to let you do horrible things to them. And I'm just not talking about a little Fifty Shades of Grey here. No, in the Persian Gulf, things get real.
weird. So it says you browse Instagram for the hottest girl finder, invite her for a Dubai thirty thousand dollar US dollar paid holiday. She can post a about to all of her adoring fans and what does she have to do in return well the choice is yours do you want to take a ton of laxatives and take a dump on her chest <laughs> or do you want to just see how happy she can make your two million dollar camel maybe you want her to put a live salmon in your ass well or you did not because in dubai anything is possible and those three things apparently have all happened. You don't have to take my word for it. A few years ago, here we go again with Tag the Sponsor. You guys need to really look into Tag the Sponsor. I'm going to. Website named Tag the Sponsor decided to expose Instagram models and it didn't take long to be inundated with screenshots of these girls agreeing to do all sorts of lurid acts for money. Tag the Sponsor featured images and videos of hot girls agreeing to do everything from pleasing camels to have sex with, i.e. rape, 11-year-old boys who need to become men. No, I'm not exaggerating. It's right there. Read it. <laughs> really nice, Kate. Right there. Have sex with 11-year-old boys who need to become men. In Arab countries, they do that a lot. Usually, they have the men sleep with the young boys. And tell them that that's how I, I became a man. So that's how you're going to become a man. This cigarette does not want to stay lit. I think it's because I'm doing too much talking. Do what to me, he says. The camera. Oh, my God. This is crazy, you guys. I can't believe I'm even reading this on camera. The way that this all works is that the rich Saudi emirate, whoever, browse Instagram looking for a girl that takes his fancy. Then he'll send her a direct message. What do you look? Here we go. Raquel Amador. What kind of what are your fantasies? What kind of fetishism? Because if you want that is why if, if you want that is why it will be very hard. I can stand it, but as long as something bad does not happen to me, tell me what kind of fetishism. Tell me and tell me exactly what you want me to put in the contract. He says, you will anal, shit, piss, and masturbate my camel. And she puts, you mean I have to do it with the camel? Only masturbate. It's the week that comes next. We need you to make sure that you give us the money, the tickets, everything we have to prepare. We make the video. This is serious, and you have to do things well. Yes, 70,000 euros for that money, less not. And I would like to stay at the Four Seasons. Do you need transportation? I need to have my assistant write down the NDA contract centers to know what you must need. Yes, I need a chauffeur. Thank you. Okay, we signed an NDA contract. Send a video saying you understand the terms and that you are willing to fulfill my fantasies and be gifted by Prince Islam bin Fakin. Do I need a signed contract? Okay, I'll send a video tomorrow because it's late here. What the fuck? What the fuck, you guys? He told her she didn't even get out there. He told her, You're gonna have to jerk off my camel. What are we doing? What does this girl think she's gonna get buried with that money? Or I mean, I just I just don't know. I don't know where we are going as a society. And I'm saying that as a gay woman, as I don't even claim LGBT. I don't like, I don't even label myself as any of that because I feel like they have gone off the fucking rails. I don't want to be labeled anything. I just want to be, uh, wow. I want to know the difference between right and wrong and not be, fool myself with some BS. That's what I want to know. Okay, here we go. So the girl's then flown out where the magic happens. In addition to doing whatever humiliating acts, she'll make sure to get a couple snaps of her shot and herself on his yacht or in his chat. She'll post on Instagram. Of course, seeing pictures of a hot girl sipping champagne in a private jet is perfectly innocent. Yeah. Once you know the signs, it's easy to spot a girl who's involved. When you take a peek, they are or who they are following and the people that comment on their photos. It's usually wealthy. Emirates. There you go. 
They just took a dump on you and made you jerk off their camel. Her. Wow. Here we go. Here's another one. Lisa Bartow Seskis. Okay. I do anal. Do you invite a lot of girls in my camel? He is trained. What is it with the fucking camels? Ah, the camels. Oh my God, guys, the camels. Yes, I have moved here from Russia and Sweden. Do you invite in Dubai? Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't even keep reading this. Hang on. Uh, yeah, you've already, you're, I've done already though. Yeah, what have you done? I went to some parties in Dubai like yours. What the fuck? 30,000. I mean, they're not even doing it for any real money. They're doing it for chump change. I got paid to eat shit, it says. Ugh. Okay, ready? Here we go. This is the last paragraph, and I want you to really think about locking your freaking kids' social media accounts after this video. Oh, God. Okay. I've literally been pissed and shitted on so many times. I just don't understand why they like it. After the third time you get shit on, you get used to it. This is what the girl says. from that She told this to Atlanta Celebrity News about Saudi Royals. She told this to Atlanta Celebrity News about Saudi Royals. Royals. She says, I've had sex with a German shepherd dog in front of a Saudi. I got paid to eat shit. I got paid to be I got paid to get beat up. I even had to stick a live salmon in some 65-year-old man's ass. I've had sex with 14-year-old boys to make them men. I've smeared my face with their shit. To, so to all of you ladies who are going to bash me, I'm 24 years old and I have a million dollars liquid in my bank account and now I'm retired and can have normal sex with whoever I want. Well, that's if there's anybody out there that wants to have sex with you after they find that out. Because personally, if you're that open about it and you shared any of the, the first line of that with me, I would have been like, "Okay, rocks. You did what? You did, you did a, a German shit? Oh, you just got by the third time you got used to it. Oh, okay." Uh, guys, wow. there are people in this world who aren't a lot in this world who have a lot more money than $1 million and they aren't having sex with German shepherds. And that, that, that is the final point. God, what is this world coming to? Really, what is this world coming to? I can't even understand this. All right, guys. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it. Um, and if you're down to support my content, again, here's my PayPal and my Cash App. I would I'm more than grateful. Uh, I don't think YouTube will ever monetize me. And by the time they do, I will not meet any of their rules because of what I talk about. I refuse to change and conform and be some mainstream content liar. So with that said, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.